All right, guys, welcome back. Now, much like buying school supplies at this time of the year, for some, the washout is a vital part of the back-to-school routine. So this is a Caribbean tradition that we know that involves children drinking some herbal concoction that is believed to cleanse or wash out the impurities from their bodies. But the question is, does it actually work? Well, here to help us to answer this question is pediatrician at We Are Kids Pediatric Care and Urgent Care. Uh, uh, it's called Pediatric Kids Center, I believe, yes, and Urgent Care. Dr. Lisa Franklin Banton, who is here to debunk a whole leap of myths for us. Hello, my Hi, darling. Doc. How are you, Doc? <laughs> I'm very well. Doc, the big question is the washout. We know it's a part of our Caribbean tradition. It's almost like a must-do before you actually exit this house and fill up back your system with all kind of impurities, right? Is this something that we should actually be doing with our children? So the short answer is no. So it's not something that I would routinely recommend for kids. Certainly not because they're going back to school. It's not something that we need to do for our kids to go back to school. So I understand from the older generation that their thoughts behind, you know, during the summer, there's a lot of running around, you're eating a lot of junk, you're playing in the dirt, you're running around, there are things like worms. and Plus you'd have had last semester's food in your body. <laughs> <laughs> All of that. So you're trying to just get everything out of the system. But we must remember that some of the ways that you are doing it may not be appropriate for a child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think though, like is, is the theory, the, does it even exist that you can just flush out whatever impurities or quote unquote impurities that exist in your body and you can just be squeaky clean to start the school year? <laughs> <laughs> so there's no doubt that if you are, that with a laxative you are washing out, you're getting rid of things out of the body. Uh, whether this makes you squeaky clean for the school year is another story, but um, I mean that's the purpose of what a laxative right. does. It really does take those things out of your body. So I mean if that's the rationale behind it. Yeah. yeah. What's the difference between the washout and the worm out doc? Because I've grown up hearing, you know, the difference. Mommy say you need a worm out versus you need a washout. What's the difference? You know, I'm not sure. I don't think from my understanding, it almost goes almost like hand in hand. Gotcha. Right. Um, you know, one of the purpose of the washout is to also get worms out of the body. So I think that's almost like a subset of the washout. The worm out is almost like a subset of the washout. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I understand. <laughs> yeah. Cersei and Senna are two two of the most widely used herbs, uh, or I should say herb ritual. Do either of these have any nutritional value, any at all? And should kids even be taking these herbs? Yeah, so that's a very good question. So they, there's very limited nutritional value to these herbs. And what we must understand is that how these herbs are dealt with with the body, so how they're metabolized, we have to bear in mind that for an adult versus a child, it may not be the best thing for a child yeah. because the child's whole system is a little less mature than an adult and it may not handle these herbs in the way that you would want them to and instead of it being beneficial it may actually cause some issues so you really have to be cautious and the other thing with these herb washouts is that there's no prescribed amount it's not done under the guidance of a doctor to say take X ounces or, you know, everybody does it a little differently mm -hmm. and God help us. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, it may be too strong and there are other implications of these herb medicines. So like for the Senapod, for example, we know that it helps to lose weight yeah. and there are other things that we don't want for the little kids. So you really have to be cautious with when you're using these herb medicines with, yeah. the, with yeah. the younger kids. You mentioned losing weight, but what are the other side effects of giving our kids these herbal uh, teas without the correct, I guess, proportion, um, you know, portion size, consistency. Some people do it three times for the week. You know, well, I really hope that persons don't give kids herbal teas that much. But as I said, one of the biggest things is that these herbs are broken down by the liver and kids, they're just not mature enough to do it. Um, so weight loss is one of these things. Sometimes it may have if impact on mental clarity, that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. So each of these herbs, I mean, each of them are, are different and they all have different properties. Um, and a lot of persons are not necessarily aware of the other properties that these herb medicines may have. Um, so you really have to be cautious 
with giving our kids these medicines. Yeah. And if it is that your sole purposes are your main reason is to deworm them before going back to school, there is a much safer way to do it. I yeah. mean, we have medications out there that come in prescribed amounts mm -hmm. that you just give them. Especially for age and age groups too. Absolutely. Touching on worms though, like how do worms even get into the body? You know, why are they there? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, worms, we usually get like the eggs on our fingers and we don't realize on our hands. So like the kids are outside, they're playing in the dirt. They may be eating foods that aren't prepared properly. So that's how they get them in inside, they, how they're consumed. And once they go in, then that worm hatches and you have it being passed out. And, you know, kids are kids. They're not washing their hands. Their hands are always in yeah. their mouth and that sort of stuff. So that's really how we get worms worms um, and as I said there's a much safer way to get rid of them as opposed to these herbal remedies that yeah. we really don't know what else is doing to our yeah. kids. Mm -hmm. How would I know if my uh, child um, needs uh, deworming? So the recommendation really is that you should deworm at least twice a year. I mean, kids are kids and we do recommend be deworming twice a year. And I guess after summer, it's a good time to deworm because it's the time that they're outside. How do you know that your child has worms? The truth is you may not even know that your child have worms. I mean, one or two persons may actually see them passing the worm, but that's not a regular thing. So mo most of them are asymptomatic. You don't even know. Some of them may complain. So they may complain about itchy bottoms or, you know, they're not eating, they're picky eaters, tummy aches, just feeling unwell. What yeah, about the those, grinding of the teeth? Ah, that is actually a myth. I get that all the time. Yeah. Okay. And it really okay. does not tell us that mm -hmm. the child has worms. None okay. of my medical books speak to grinding <laughs> of the teeth as being a symptom of worms. So yes, but I do get that all the time. Okay. So Doc, what would you then recommend for parents who want to boost their child's immune system heading back into this new school year? Well, you know, the best thing that you can do for your child to boost their immune system is to make sure that they're having balanced meals. Mm -hmm. Kids nowadays, they're not eating properly. And we as adults, we don't even know what eating properly looks like. And I would say if you don't know what it looks like, just seek help, ask your physician, dietitians are out there just get some advice and you'll be so surprised to know that what you're actually feeding your child is not appropriate so the best immune booster is a balanced meal yeah, yeah. all right we have two minutes to go so we have some more time so i want you to get uh, into that balanced meal description about what our kids should be eating and what they should be staying away from Give me the top five things that they should be staying away from. Oh my gosh. So sugars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I guess all sweeties are out the door. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess all the fast food. Yeah. Um, our kids are consuming a lot of juices. Absolutely. I mean, let's replace the juices with water. Yeah. What about the um, ones that say sugar free? But if you read those boxes, they're not really they're sugar not. free. They're yes. not. I, don't, I want they you to say it. Not, yeah. We know what it's in but I want you to free. say it. Yes. Look on the back of those boxes and you would see it's, it's sugar, um, you know, in another name, but they're mm -hmm. not sugar free. So please read the labels. They're yeah. not. Thank you for saying that, Doc. Yeah, yes. So the, so the juices are out the window as well. Um. Yeah, I said the fast foods, five things. Yeah. Um, hmm. What I would want What's to about say, processed foods. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Eat so much processed foods. You know, I mean, eating from the ground is not a thing these days. But we eat, and we're not. Kids are not eating their fruits and vegetables. They're not. They are not. They don't even know what they look like. Yeah. I mean, and as parents, we are encouraging them to eat their fruits and vegetables. We aren't eating our fruits and vegetables. So that's something that we have to do, lead by example, so that the kids would know that this is what a balanced meal looks like. I mean, most of us when we're eating, there's this much starch on the yeah. plate. Um, and then this amount of protein of, uh, yeah, yeah. And, Veg and vegetables, More if no there's any, exactly, if there's any yeah. vegetable at all. So we have to lead by example so that our kid knows what healthy eating looks like. Yeah. So, yeah. so Doc, we, we know that you are located at We Are Kids Pediatric Center and Urgent Care. Where is that exactly for persons who might want to come and have a, a quick chat with you? They want to take their children to visit you for a nice checkup before the school year starts. Where can we find you? So I'm at We Are Kids Pediatric Center and that's at 195 Constant Spring in Mana Center. And we also have our urgent care, which is our after hours center. And that's located at the Rail Equity Professional Suite, which is on 218 Mountain View Avenue. We're on social media. Our handle is at we are W E R K I D S J A. We are Kids J A. And feel free to reach out to us. Lovely. Right, thank doc, you so well, much for so being here, Doc. Learn so much. Thank you. So thanks, Doc. Pedi pediatrician at We Are Kids Pediatric Center and Urgent Care, Dr. Lisa Frank. Franklin Banton. We can smile. We'll be right back.